There you go. There you go. I, I, I think in your life, you know, you probably meet 10 people that affect you the way Aaron affected me. And uh, it's, it's the kind of friend that, that, you know, I love these kinds of friends. You don't, you know, you can just pass them on the street and wind up having coffee or lunch and just, you know, enjoying the, enjoying the chat. And you never knew, you never knew what the talk was going to be about. It might, it might be about affordable housing and it might be about the Grateful Dead. You just, you don't know. <laughs> you just have to roll with it, you know? <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, basically, right now, after 30 years of trying to achieve a continuous waterfront park, what we have is a north park and a south park. And it's up to this body, up to the city, up to the governor, to clear the path to complete this long-term effort. Aaron Lewitt had a lifetime commitment to social justice issues. He came to Hoboken in 1989 uh, with his wife, Lynn Shapiro, and shortly uh, thereafter joined our board of directors. At the time, Aaron worked for the Enterprise Foundation, which built affordable housing and addressed racial equity issues. Aaron joined as a volunteer at the Hoboken Community Center to help initially with the single room occupancy building that we run in Hoboken. You know, we're one of the only single resident occupancy buildings in North Hudson County that provides housing for 96 single low income men. And but for our building, many would remain on the streets. Aaron Lewitt joined our family at the shelter in 1984, and he was really involved with the Campaign for Housing Justice. That was a program, it still is a program, where we help people move from the streets to the shelter to their own homes. I met Aaron because I'm the executive director of the Hoboken Housing Authority, and Aaron became a member of my board of commissioners. We started inviting him to our inspections and getting involved in our construction contracts, and unfailingly, he improved them. And Aaron was such a dedicated and empathetic volunteer with these men. I mean, he would come almost every day, walk the building, looking for structural things that needed to be addressed, or he'd simply paint the wall or hang a nail. Whatever it took to ensure that the lives of those men were as good as possible, Aaron would kick in. One of the best projects he worked here was actually securing the whole building. Aaron could see a building not like most people see, see a building. It's not just a square building with a top on it. He'd see it as it could and should be. He always brought it back to the people we were serving and what the end result for those people was. And, and he always took great pride. You could see that and when something worked and he had that ability to bring value to it, you could see that, that, that's, that that's the prize. It wasn't money, it wasn't ego, it wasn't anything. It was, we've done something good for people out there. Uh, and, and, you know, we're housers. We house people in my profession, and Aaron brought great value to that. Now, what will this rent for? Well, as you know, this is a low-income building. Uh, this studio would be about 325 a month. Uh, it'll be rented to a single person. Most likely, the single person's going to be an elderly person, that's why these studios are on the lower floors. Yes. Above will have the two bedroom units. Uh, so you'd never have uh, a couple living in a studio like this? No, because the chances are they'll have a kid, then they're ready to move out. We're trying to get people situated in long-term housing. In a stable situation, right. But next time we come back, we'll be looking at finish work and drywall. The she rock will be up, the, fine, the finished carpentry, the doors. Yeah, and exciting. You'll, you'll see an exciting building. Thanks for the tour. So in 2001, 
we had an opportunity to engage with the original developers of Maxwell Place, Danny Gans and George Vallone. Aaron and I worked with a team of consultants and we spent a considerable amount of time at this site in the original Maxwell House coffee plant building. We reached an agreement with them where everything on the river side of Sinatra Drive North would become part of the continuous public waterfront park that we had proposed in 1990. Originally, this was going to be a townhouse development as part of the Maxwell Place development. So this would have been townhouses as originally planned, and then there would have been more townhouses on the North Pier. Essentially, the, the entire site would have been covered with residential and commercial development. Aaron is the, he's the kind of big brother that you can't say in front of that I'd like a cheese sandwich because the next day you'd get a cheese sandwich. You could never say in front of Aaron, you know, my washing machine is unlevel and it's making a loud noise whenever we're using it. Because literally that day he'd show up at your house with tools ready to fix whatever it is that you had going on. And it didn't matter. Like he had a skill set, you know, you could say, you know, my, my Lamborghini's, you know, headlight is off and Aaron would have the booklet and would be able to put that headlight back on. And then the next day, you know, you could say my tomato plants are looking pretty poor and he'd come over with the right solution that you needed to pour on that plant to make it get, to make it get better. So he, he was really, I think Aaron epitomized the jack of all traits. He really could do, he could do anything. And you know, what really made Aaron special, it's not just that he could do it, it's that he would do it. There's a, there's a certain outlook that people that love gardening, that love to nurture, have that Aaron had. He, he had a way of not only plants and vegetables, but also a way of nurturing people. You know, it, it always amazed me. I would talk to people in town that are doing similar missions. And the thing that, besides the fact that we all wanted to do the right thing, we all had another thing in common. It was always Aaron. You know, it was Aaron's down at the shelter and he's helping them. Aaron's over at the HHA and he's helping them. Aaron's at the Hoboken Community Center and he's helping them. You know, the common denominator has always been Aaron. Um, and, you know, he just made this really strong, but silent, but strong contribution to whatever he was doing. <laughs>